big announcement is, surprise, surprise, now in your contacts, you can add them straight into HomeBots. Just oh. one click. <laughs> one click, so it's right awesome. there. It says, awesome. says add. Now, um, I don't know if I if I do that, I'll send directly to yours. I'll sh should I just give it a try, Jeff? Yeah, that some of these may already be in there, Marcus, but give it a shot. Send lead to your home bot account. Confirm send. That's it. <laughs> there you go. Said it was Use simple. That. Just simple, need that simple. staples button. That was easy. Right. And now it's and now there's a little now there's a little text box check box there in home bot. Not what happens if they're already in there? Does it duplicate it? If, oh, I if don't know. it's or if it's already in, it won't, it will not duplicate it. It will give you a notification that, that it's already in. So there the you only, go. The only caveat, and Stephen and I haven't connected because um, I've been playing with it a lot in the last few days, is if you don't have all the necessary information for HomeBot, meaning a name and email address and a legitimate address, it won't, HomeBot won't accept it, obviously. Um, so it's important that when those contacts come in, you understand that those are the three criteria that have to be in that contact. We all get, we all get leads where they, they leave their name out or they, they leave their address out. Um, those obviously will not slide into HomeBot because it requires those three criteria to accept it into, into the HomeBot app. But I'm going to give you the positive to the negative on that. The good thing with that is that means you've gone in and kind of scrubbed it right in street text to ensure that it's good. And that way, when you hit send, you know you're sending good data over. And at the same time, if you get in the habit of it, start tagging what you need to inside your street text platform. I, I got behind, I initially did the, I, I'm doing both of these and it's hilarious because I initially got about, oh, 50 leads behind in updating the information. So I got to spend a couple of days catching up on that. But once I started moving everything over for it to go over at that point, it's seamless. So what I would do is once I had everything updated for information, I send it to HomeBot. When I go into HomeBot and find it, now I just tweak the value and I do a manual send out of HomeBot and it gets it out to the clients quicker. I already have an appointment today at 2 p.m. So I know it's working and I just started doing the transfer over day yesterday. So when is yeah, everything- kudos, kudos to Steven and the gang. I mean, this couldn't be any easier. I mean, it's it's one, one button and you're in. Just make sure that when you look at your contacts, the requisite information is there or else you're gonna have to go back, tweak that contact information before HomeBot will accept it. So when is this going to take effect? Because mine doesn't have this. Okay, uh, Steve, you want to unmute yourself and give us, uh, I only I didn't know what I was talking about. So I just went to the <laughs> account and kind of made it up. So. <laughs> That's good. I, I knew Liana and Jeff would help you out. So it's good. Liana, do you mind if I, can I use your account for a second? Is that cool with you? Thumbs up. If I just yeah, yeah go, go ahead. All right. Sounds good. Okay, I'll, I'll just demo it here. Uh, I even did the drum roll and everything, Steve, and I had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> oh, you got to make it so I can share my screen, Marcus. Okay, yeah, one sec here. That's Steven, funny. we already took a look at my account. Oh, you did? Okay, okay. I'll I, I'll just run through. Apologize for being a little late, uh, everyone here. So, thanks. So, if, for everyone that is looking for it, if you go into the settings here, and then you go to integrations, you're going to see this option at the top called HomeBot. So what we've done is we've separated out the email integrations. This is if you're wanting to send, you know, maybe leads to your team and whatnot. Then you've got the Zapier integrations. And then at the top here, you'll have HomeBot. So you can see that Leon has already connected his HomeBot account. If you have a HomeBot account, you would then come here and click the connection. And um, everybody's been able to connect pretty easily. So, so far, it's been seeming really smooth. So you should just be able to connect that nice and easily. Once that is done, your leads are not automatically added to HomeBot. And the reason we designed it that way is because we had heard feedback saying, you know, we want to make sure that we're only going to add, uh, you know, agents can, you want to be in control of the leads you're going to send. In the future, we might provide the permission or add it to an automation. But for now, what you would do is you can see here uh, on the contact section, if you scroll to the right, you're going to have this add button. Now, some of the leads are going to have grayed out ad button. And that is because 
there's no address. So for some of the leads like a lead ad, we don't collect the address up front. This might be a buyer lead or this might be the 12 tips lead and you need to still get the address. So once you have the address added and you would just click on the lead and you would add in the address. The address is here, this button would then become clickable and then you would be able to send the lead. You can see here that Leon has already passed these ones to HomeBot. And as Jeff was mentioning, it's just a one click. You click it and it'll automatically pass this lead with address right over. And then on the left-hand side, you'll see this little checkbox as well. Going through. We're also adding an update. So if you've been previously adding your leads to HomeBot, and this will be live, should be live today, shortly. If you click on the lead, you'll see an error that says this lead is already in HomeBot. And then what we weren't doing is we weren't changing it to show this check mark, but later today that will change. So it'll reflect that it's already in HomeBot. So you don't have to kind of, you know, keep seeing the lead and trying to add them. So it'll you can see, And you can see the tags also that I started to add seller street text, boom. Because this yeah. way, when I go in and I want to do anything in the all leads, search this and that, um, I'm going to start adding the 12 mistakes so that if I want to go ahead, one of the things I am going to do is I'm going to go hit all those guys up and see if they have received theirs and the famous for not check your spam, this and that. I'm going to send them another email and get engagement. But this way, by, by searching the tags area, I'll be able to just roll through this thing in a hurry. That's awesome. And I'll actually demo that in a second for some... So here's, here's another one where Leon could add that one to HomeBot. We have an address, uh, you, you know, may not, oh, it says it's in HomeBot. I'm not sure if that one, maybe we got a HomeBot there. But, you can hit add anyway for the heck of it. Go ahead on Janice. Okay, so this could be one that was already there. Let's just see. So I'm gonna click add, confirm send. Uh, yeah, so this one, this is an example of where we're going to um, make a quick little update. Basically, Leon had previously already added this one to HomeBot. So our system was failing and sending it because it's saying it's a, the contact already exists. Later today, uh, Leon, if you do click this button again, it would then just automatically update to look like this. So these are ones that Leon sent through. This one was already there. So we're just making that update to make sure it can reflect that going forward. Um, but that's essentially how it works. So it's pretty straightforward and easy. That being said, though, if you're using it and you feel that we should add something, you know, please let us know. I mean, we're this is a, currently an open project, so we will take your feedback. Um, you know, we'll, we'll look at it right away if there's anything that we need to add uh, or make changes to. But that's basically how it works, and which is great because now you can send your leads with just one click rather than going to whole button manually adding them or sending a CSV. So hope everybody likes that. And then uh, to um, Leon's point here, if you are searching for leads, just a reminder, you can always search by tags. So if you wanted to, and like he was saying, I'm gonna have a specific tag or maybe it's a HomeBot tag or one of the other ones that I'm adding. Then of course, if you just hit, you add this condition and then you hit search, it would then search for only um, those leads. So hope you find that helpful as well. Yeah, that's basically the introduction. I know a lot of you have been looking for HomeBot or wanting to use it and we finally have it out. So uh, I'm excited to see what you do with this, with this uh, integration. Thanks. When I see the cloud, it makes me feel good. The team feel good. Oh, I, I just, cloud. that's awesome. Thanks so much. So I guess this wouldn't really be available for people in Canada, right? I know, but we'll, we will, uh, the next one that we're looking at, I guess Cloud CMA has a version like this as well. It is available for Canadians. So uh, we'll be working on that integration. So do you want to make sure so what is, the what, is, what is yes, it called? Homebot is US only. What is it called? Home Beat. Wow. Home, yeah, Beat. Home Beat by Cloud CMA. Okay, check it out. Okay, thanks. Awesome. Cool. Any okay, well, I'll give it back to you, Marcus, or any other questions? But... Yeah, any questions on that specifically, HomeBot? Jacob, I think you got your, your question answered there early about the manual versus automation. Hey, Marcus, I just got to say, and Stephen, again, thanks to you and, and the crew, but this is such a time saver. Instead of having to manually input these things, um, it's it's huge. So thanks again. Welcome. Yeah, and the reduction in time also is if you just send a mass list over to, to them guys, it still takes them four or five days sometimes to get to you. So the, the, the time is definitely saved. And when I say Windows for Dummies, what it does is it goes ahead and scrubs for you to make sure you're not trying to duplicate or send something over or think that you sent something and then find out later the hard way you didn't. 
Stephen, is this? I, I do have a question, and I didn't didn't even think of it before. But is this only effective as of when you guys push the button for the integration? Meaning, any leads that came in before you set this up, will they still have this same button apply to them, or are they out of the loop? Oh yeah, no, no, hundred percent. You can go through old leads and pass them to Homebot. So, and if you've already added one to HomeBot, like I was mentioning a little later, like right now it will fail. It'll just say, oh, this email's already been taken. But uh, as of a bit later today, if you click that button, it'll just sync with HomeBot and say, oh, this leads already in HomeBot, which will be nice. So you won't harm the system by doing it. It'll just, uh, it'll just update a little bit easier for it. Uh, it'll just reflect that update. But yeah, you can go to your oldest lead that you have and you can still send them to HomeBot. And Juan was asking about HomeBot for the first time. Homebot, what does it run for the seller side? It's like a dollar a day. Is it, how much is like Homebot? 20, yeah, 20, well, it's 29 bucks a month for the first 500. And then for every 500 after that, it's like 10 bucks. So I've got like a couple thousand sitting up in there. If you send a large list over, they're going to ask you the source of your leads. So make sure you tell them that those are prior leads you had or out of your street text or whatever. They want to make sure you're not just buying a list to upload in there, but it's, it's so inexpensive that it, you, I always say, if you don't have an assistant, you are one and you couldn't pay an assistant, the kind of money that you save using HomeBot for the automation every month. I, I guess I'm not really clear what the, uh, this HomeBot does. Is it just sending out CMA? It sends them, it keeps them up to date on their equity. Um, and if you go in and adjust their value, because as with anything else, it is an algorithm. So it's not going to have the exact amount, but it lets it keeps them more of their equity, maybe not their value so much, but lets them see how much money they have, what they can do with that money if they wanted to sell and buy something else or things like that. Very interactive website that, uh, that allows you to, uh, you know, there's a lot of interaction where they're seeing their value. They're seeing a lot of options there. You can click little buttons to let you know, and you can really kind of see what, what they're doing. So it, it makes it really nice to keep up with what the uh, sellers are doing with their um, leads, with their uh, information. One of, the, one, of the, one of the best ways to describe this, I say it's got enough garbage for everybody. Um, the, the most outstanding, it's got great features, but the most outstanding feature I have with HomeBot is it'll tell you the activity. So every day I can go in there and I can look and see who's been active in the system. It'll tell me what they've looked at, what they've done. It, it kind of scrubs down the engagement factor for me. So now all I do is um, I have my daughter send a generic message. It just says, hi, I see you were in our system looking at homes. You have any questions? I think blah, 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 blah. And because it's sending to them, once again, this is where I tie bomb bomb in. When they open it or respond, I get the activity notice about that. So this is letting me see who's the most active in the system for me to be able to know who I need to be following up with right away and what have you. So it's it's a good tool. Can I and that was gonna be my question. Hey guys, I have a quick question. I know you kind of have a protocol, Leon. This is Missy. Um, about so when somebody dumps into your bomb bomb or, or into um, K Homebot, are you going ahead and immediately kind of sending them a welcome video and trying to explain the lack thereof or algorithms with Homebot and then following up when they are active again? No, that's Jennifer's job and she don't use HomeBot yet. But no, what I do is when I go in there because I have a chance to see their daily activity, I will I kind of track what they're doing. When I see someone look at something five or six times in a row, it's like I get on those right away. When, when I, I, I'm kind of soft at my approach of things, when they turn around and go in there and they just kind of look, it's like, oh, okay, um, I let it be. But that's why they do get the one email asking the yes, no question if, if there's any questions they have about anything in there. And then because it, so what I do is I share one common email. Actually, I share two common emails, but one common email on that system with um, my, my call center and myself so that if they need to be called right away, one of us is going to get that. But um, unless they're really, I mean, they can request a CMA. I've had a lot of people the last couple of days. Yeah, I've had a lot of people the last couple of days. Did you just click the big link? For which one? I just needed me. I think Missy went Keep away. Going. And Keep I'm going. here. 
Okay, so basically at the end of the day, because I can follow their activities, um, what I like to do is once I see these guys are all over it like they are, then I'll either come in or if they need to be called, I'll call them. Can I share a screen, Marcus? Yeah, let me uh, let me give you a co-host action for a second. While Leon's so doing that, let me just piggyback on something that he said. For those that, that aren't familiar with HomeBot is you will get a weekly report of your most frequent users, which which is really... It, it's been it's been very very helpful because if you've got somebody that's gone in checked their value or played with value or clicked on one of the other links within there seven or eight times within a given week clearly there's something up so that necessitates a follow up immediately and that's that's a key component of Homebot as well. Okay. Yeah, that's a, that's one of the best things is because obviously when we have so many leads it's hard to keep that that personal touch. And when you see, as Jeff said, somebody who's gone in and looked at their value and done this five times in, in a day, it's it's a great way to know, oh, I've got to reach out to that person. Yeah, can you guys see my screen okay? Yeah. Yep. All right, so so here's here's my daily one thing I do. I'll come in here and I'll look. It says all active homeowners or buyers. I just need to run it for who's active. So like yesterday, for example, and this thing updates all the time. I talked to Tammy yesterday. She came in here, looked, she had tuned a value, requested CMA. She sat there and looked at my bomb bomb video four times, um, viewed her home five times. That's as active as you're going to get. I called her up. They're moving to Arizona. And um, what I explained to her about tuning the value, because the number one thing people are doing right now is tuning the values based on what they think homes are selling. Darcy four times, Dennis four or five times. So when I do that, this person here six times. When they do this, one of the best conversations I'm having right now with them is explaining how your home should be listed at the value it's truly worth, even though we know it's going to get more. So it makes for a very fun conversation with them explaining the current market and the way it's working. And now you're, you know, you're building that relationship. So pushing a relationship with them is like, well, here's what we do. We're going to list your home at this price is what the value's at. And I send them stuff showing and in our MLS. When I pull it up, it shows what they listed at and what they actually sold for. So now I've got a live model in front of me that I don't have to do anything extra other than just pull up their area. And I go, look, this house came on the market at 350, but it sold for 385. This one came on the market at 360, it sold for 410. So the mindset I'm already getting is I'm not here to show up a listing and argue with you about listing your home at 50,000 over market value, but you have to make them understand where the value truly is. And when I show them, that by working the system the way it's supposed to work, they're going to benefit more. It's like sign here. So um, I got a listing I'll take active next Tuesday from what I got out of this, same thing, doing it that way. And it's just a really powerful tool. I think what you're saying, everything is strategy driven right now. I mean, it's yes. just, I, you're offering, I have a game plan and this is what I can bring to the table over anybody else, which is huge. And this tool um, if you don't have HomeBot and it's available to you guys, you really should sign up. It's amazing. So, but I was just wondering because I think a lot of times the algorithms are so off and the values are so low, people are unsubscribing before they actually understand the value of it. So that's what I thought. Maybe I would do a video, a, a welcome video or something in the very beginning, just to kind of explain that. And I know that some of you guys do that. Um, and I just thought it might be a little more helpful sometime to keep people in the bucket. Here's why you guys I have check a out Wendy. Wendy's got a great video that I think she's got posted to the Street Text Insider explaining to her clients what got exactly it. it is and what she's providing. So you guys should check that out and probably uh, emulate it if you think it's appropriate. Well, the and so when you're tagging, when you're tagging them, you're tagging them as street text or ST buyer, ST seller. So then you can do a mass email by searching those guys and bringing them up in that. It doesn't no, quite actually, work that way. No, no, I, I don't, I don't typically. <laughs> Go ahead, Wendy. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, I have it set up in the funnel. So there's no searching for people. It's just the funnel will send out the how to use HomeBot, welcome to HomeBot email. So um, I just make sure that goes out at the same time that we set them up on HomeBot, which now we kind of need to move up a little bit if we set them up on HomeBot a little faster. So. I'm coming to Vegas with my Jeep girl. I'd have to stop in Austin first. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm gonna yeah, come I'll, see her first. I'll, I'll be in Austin first. Yes. Yeah. So, so one one of my things, though, honestly, Missy, is I turned around and rather than I always say, you know, we sometimes forget we're not the only one. When you turn around and call somebody out who and you hear who is this, chances are you might be the fifth to tenth person to call them. So I don't like overwhelming anybody. I get that first one out, and then when I see the activity, now I send them something. Okay. And it, it's just worked well. One of the things you can do in HomeBot that's great that I do is you can send a mass video out to all your clients in there. So I'm doing a okay. quarterly right now, but it's just, I always say this, remember once people unsubscribe, it's very difficult to get them back. So I'd rather get the engagement and get them knowing who Missy is before you start blasting with 50 emails or, or you know, texts so that now, oh, that's Missy click you're 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 safe versus oh another one of them i always tell my agents i don't want to be in agent number 80 behind the 79 in front because you're going to hear their frustration about the 79 people that have spammed them so and, and everybody's got their own technique there's more than one right way i just don't like overwhelming people at first so i just go at it softly and that's why i like the home bot because when i see they're active and i send them directly now i personalize to them and now they're going to accept it cool all right thank you so I'm curious because we've had a couple weeks now of you guys using that 12 tips ad. How do you think this ad works in comparison to those of you using the home value ad? Um, and, and now obviously with this home bot integration, where do you see the value of it? How do you like it comparably? Um, I'm, I would like to hear both sides. I'm running both ads still because the home value still get me hit. I like the 12 mistakes. I went in and, you know, since it's a work in progress, I went ahead and branded the 12 mistakes with my information on it because I actually had an agent download my stuff to share with somebody else, which we all do it. And uh, out of humor, I did post an insider group where I sent them a, a referral thing for street tech. So if they join, hello. But um, it's cleaner as far as the numbers. The only thing I have to go look up is their address. And I use that sim.com or any who.com or any of those. I use the MLS. When I put the address in there, and I was telling Stephen this yesterday, when I update their information into the street tech system, now all I got to do is a one click for HomeBot to carry across. And then I go in and I tweak the value and I let it run. But it's it's been so clean. And the street text folks that are getting uploaded over into the HomeBot have been looking at this stuff. So it's it's a really nice way. And you know the deal, you're giving them something of value. So it's always, hey, what am I giving you no one else is? So they're getting something of value. Now what I'm gonna springboard on mine is the follow-up will be making sure they got it. Um, if not, I'm gonna tell them look in, you know, in the uh, spam folder. And if not, let us know, we'll send it again. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna break down and I've already kind of made a little thing. I'm gonna do the 12 steps. I'm gonna make a YouTube short video of every step and I'm gonna make a regular YouTube video of every step a little longer. So that now I have other material to send out to them because I've got the material and what they're getting from me will be what they've already got. So they're knowing what they got ahead of time. And then I'll post it on my Facebook business page and just keep that as a running thing once a week. So now I've got material that someone can use that's also useful. Keep us posted, we wanna see it. Anybody else on that 12 steps? I've, I've heard some good feedback on it in the group and some people love it, some people don't. Um, I think Leon, ultimately what I'm curious is if you get their address and send them that home bot, will they feel like I didn't ask for that type of thing? Or are you preluding it? Because I know a lot of the, the idea with the home value, it's easy to, to start the conversation because you're, you're asking about their home's value with this 12 tips. A lot of people go too aggressively. And the first thing you should be asking for is basically, Hey, did you get it? And then asking questions specifically about the list and then value stack with the home value ask well the funny thing is the emails that go out to them have my valuation link at the bottom of it too so that gives me another way of cross referencing if they actually went across and went into that so like i said i tweaked the value from where to go i had a guy yesterday looked at the video five times that i sent him and i and i actually did the google earth started at a safe way in this town he's at because there ain't much else there zoomed into his house told him you know i've sold several of those homes um, from that builder da 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 Guy went in and looked at it like five times last night and then clicked the valuation link on top of it. So I know it's getting traction. 
Yeah, I, I um I hope everyone can hear me. Um, I, I'm having a few issues with my new Mac, so uh, it's just a little staticky. Um, hopefully they'll be servicing it very soon. Um, but I actually um uh, found the seller tip was really e um, effective once I didn't put in the city, um, and then I just automated it and and pretty much um sort of meshed it with my um you know um the just the home valuation um uh, templates that I that I use right now. Um, that I got from uh, Jen Salter, but I found that um, once you don't put in the city, um, you do get a lot. I, I like when I put in a city, then uh, I wasn't getting very much traction on it. Um, but I found it working really well. And uh, there's a video posted by me as well as uh, Troy to show you how to um, brand it. Um, so if you go into Street Text Insider, you can you can probably find those videos. But um, I think it's it, maybe it might just be that because I wasn't getting much traction when I when I added in a specific city there. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense, Mohini. And, and first off, thanks for the video. I think that's been uh, helpful for a lot of people. Obviously, um, when it comes to the city, though, specifically, and here's just my understanding or or why I feel that might be the case is that you know you're 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 doing a 15 mile minimum targeted radius, then you're being specific to a small subsection of that targeted radius. Facebook still looks at the greater picture. They look at, they're, they're still going to serve that ad to, to, to everybody within your targeted area, but only the small, you know, subsection of individuals who live within city that's been specified go, oh, this is for me and start clicking and taking positive action. Whereas a good cross section of individuals aren't taking positive action. So Facebook then says, okay, this isn't as good of an ad. And essentially it stunts its growth. Right. Whereas I think removing that and being more inclusive to the area around you does offer that ability for clicks and, and engagement. And even if those people don't become leads, you know, that little bit of positive engagement tells Facebook it's a better ad and kind of spreads the joy a little bit better. So um, personally, I do feel that's the, the right way to go. There, there are some of you in different areas where you're saying, you know, I don't mind paying a little bit more money for the leads I want in my area. I don't want leads, you know, five miles away from me. That's fine. Go ahead and put that city name in and expect to, to pay a little bit more. But I think that was really good advice. But I, but I think also, um, I think somehow, because what I've found is somehow Facebook does know where you are and automatically it is attracting people closer to my city anyways. I think only in one, one instance, I, I think it attracted somebody in Texas but that's like after so many different leads. So for the most part, it still does um, zoom in on the city that you're actually located in. So you won't get a whole bunch of erroneous ones at, at any rate. And what I did as well is uh, instead of 15 miles, I put 25 because um, you know that, that would encompass the whole of GTA, which I, I service anyways. So you know that, that's also kind of helped. So I'm, I know it works because it's averaging about a $5 phone number. What I'm curious more is what your follow-up everybody's follow-up has been to that ad specifically to create conversations. And of course, you know, the difference between that follow-up with a home value lead um, would be how, how I'm, I'm curious to see how you guys have been working that. Because it's great to get phone numbers, but tell me what you're doing with them. Are you calling them? Are you texting them? Are you emailing them? How are you, how are you working these leads? Um, I'm calling as well as I'm texting them, uh, depending on how I, I, the first thing I do is try to call them and just see if, you know, did they get it? Um, I also send them a message on Facebook. So I have three different ways. Either the first thing is to call them. If I don't get a hold of them by phone, then I'll send them a text. Um, and that's actually in the automation that I've created. Um, and then if I don't hear from them, then I'll send them, a, a, like if I can find them on Facebook, then I send them a message and just say, you know, I just want to check to make sure you got it. A lot of them are saying they got it. And, uh, you know, then I, I start saying, you know, that um, a lot of people are really um, curious about their equity uh, because of the pandemic and how it's affected and the prices are going crazy. Um, so I wouldn't mind giving you a free one that we can just, I can just email over to you. And a lot of people, um, you know, uh, a lot of them have actually been pretty receptive. So I, you know, I, I put them on, um, I guess I call it the Jen Salter home valuation thing that I, I got from her course that I, I sort of created um, these templates based on her course. And they seem to be responding because then I, I do a Google Earth and I see that they are kind of clicking on it. I haven't, unfortunately, I have, I have so many leads coming in with that ad as well as the regular home value ad that, um, and I've just been just extremely busy. So I haven't actually been following up with as many as fast as I should be. Um, I, I'm probably a week behind, but um, you know, the ones that I have been, I, I, I've been finding it um, fairly successful. 
at least in getting positive responses. And then on Facebook as well, if, if you didn't know, if you're able to find them, you can actually call them. Like you can actually, so if they don't give you their cell phone, you can call them right on Facebook through your, your messenger. If you look at the top, there's a little telephone, you can actually call them. So that, that's something that I just go in with my, um, my smartphone and I actually call them. So one way or the other, I try to get a hold of them. Love it. Any questions on that? I know you've got to be some people using it right now. How's it working for you? You you do understand too, um, you have to add in the text message automation. We do have a video in the, in the insider group if you wanna, because it has a standard email and just one email that goes out with the PDF, nothing else. So it's unlike the home value ad that has a nine month long drip campaign, this one and five text messages built in. This one has no text messages. You have to add them in and just one email, just so you're aware of that until you go in there and change it. I added one text and then the thing is, like I said, from that point, because my follow-up is, is basically making sure that they actually got it. If not, have you to check the spam folder and what have you just to get a yes, no response. Well, we were talking about this yesterday when we were talking about this ad is you have to remember when I clicked on an ad, I asked for something specific. So in this case, I asked for 12 pips. I didn't ask for a phone call. I didn't ask for a listing appointment. I didn't ask for a home value. So sometimes some of our, like our need is, is I want to have a listing. I want to have this. So that's how we respond to the person. So when we're calling them and we're doing those things, just remember that I asked for a 12 tips list. So start there. Hey, I just wanted to make sure you got it. Um, and that you received it, these things end up somewhere. Obviously selling a home could be stressful, especially in this crazy market. And then see where the conversation goes after that. Like before you jump in, I always say, you know, sometimes we're answering questions before a person has actually asked it. Give enough space to actually let someone ask a question before you try to answer it. We're really good at verbal diarrhea. <laughs> so what happens is we're like, talk, 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 talk. And we don't leave enough space for someone to have the question. We're just answering all the questions we think we should be answering. You know a lot in real estate and you think this person should know all of these things. And they're like, I don't know you yet. I wanted to know the 12 tips thing. So give me enough space to ask the question before you answer it. And I think that's key is remember how you got this lead. And you know, when you have a team, sometimes you pass the lead off. And I was having this conversation with somebody yesterday who had a team. And I said, the team needs to know where the click came from. The team needs to know what was the original, like what were they asking for? And then the team needs to gather around delivering on providing what I asked for. So that's kind of like what we are gathering around conversation here at the office and brainstorming. So I thought I would share kind of that insight. Um, another thing that you might want to do as well is um, if, I, I mean, um, with our system here, we can pull up uh, public records like with their tax information that um, if you punch in their name that, that, that I guess has downloaded from Facebook into there, a lot of times their address pops up and I've just been sending them out a postcard. So, I mean, it, it kind of starts the conversation, right? And some people have even called back. And um, the oddest thing is um, my, um, my Real Geeks um, website, they have a, a, the ability to send out, um, like I guess a custom po postcard um, that I've created myself. So when I send that out, the funny thing is it doesn't look that way because the colors are not the kind of colors that I would have liked and all that. But, because it kind of looks sort of almost, uh, I guess, not as polished, people are calling me back and saying, hi, um, I, uh, I don't remember asking for this, but at least they're calling me back. And then I'm saying, oh, well, you know, you know, and, and I'm starting with the conversation as because some of them will say, um, you know, um, uh, I guess in some cases, I guess the person's name was incorrect. And then they will, they will go on about why are you sending this person my stuff? And I just said, well, you know, somebody, um, somebody uh, signed up for this and it's a good thing we sent it to your address because otherwise somebody's got your information. Maybe they're trying to get your home value, right? And they've kind of liked it. And then they've given me their cell and everything else. <laughs> Cause I go, yeah, in case this person uh, calls back and asks about your stuff, at least I can contact you again. <laughs> they actually gave me all their information on a couple of occasions. So 
um, that kind of worked out pretty okay. Awesome, awesome. Hey, what about we change this a little bit to shares, wins? Um, anything that you'd like to specifically talk about? I have to one. you guys. It doesn't have to be. Yeah, go ahead, Juan. I I basically had this uh, street text lead that came in way back in like December. They actually led me to a family. A relative bought a house down here in Florida uh, about a month ago. Then I guess over the weekend, they were having a party and they decided to look up this one listing that had been on the market and they thought was back up on the market. So it was a third party website. Well, they reached back out to me asking me about this house. This house is not on the market. I explained to them why some of these third party websites typically have outdated information. Come to find out they can't buy it, but I was able to get uh, the buyer who became a homeowner who also had another home in another part of Florida, sent them a CMA, but I did it three different ways. I did the regular boring RPR way. Then I sent them a uh, internet's best guess video that showed how everyone had a different price point for their house. And then I send them the good old home bot and we're gonna be listing that house. So the street text lead just kind of did all of this and we're gonna list a house someplace else in Florida, but it's all good. Well done. That's a good follow-up. Keep the ball rolling, keep sharing guys. Who's got another win? And it doesn't have to be about wins too. If you don't have a win, you just need some help and you've been struggling with follow-up, you can also, I have a question. So yeah. I have run the, the seller, the main map, uh, map ad that I originally started out with. And I have my split test still in my columns or whatever. Can I just turn those on again and see how they come up? Or do I have to restart the whole thing? How long, uh, how long have they been paused for? Oh, it's been several months. I wouldn't turn them back on. If you uh, if you created them before you did your domain um, setup, you're gonna, most likely they won't even go live. And even if they did go live, they'd be uh, going against Facebook's current policy. You're just yeah, opening I, up a can of worms. I had them live after the domain. So I have it after the domain was set up, I was letting it run and it was doing pretty well. I shut them off because I moved into something. I was doing the lead ads for a while. So My thought on that is, I mean, if, if they were built after the domain change and they're not going to get in hot water, you can always try it. But again, most likely they're going to, if they've been paused for more than 72 hours, which they clearly have, the idea is when you unpause them, they're going to latch on to a new test audience and start fresh anyways. The only difference now is your lifetime metrics are going to be muddying up. Oh. You know, you're going to follow the last seven days for the first week, which is great. But now you're into week two, week three, week four, and you're following the lifetime data, which is no longer accurate because it's from a, a previous period. My recommendation would be, I mean, given how easy it is to launch a new three ad split test, takes you 15 seconds. Um, I personally would recommend doing it that way and starting fresh with new numbers, new stats, new everything. And then you're finding a new demographic anyways, as opposed to turning on an old ad. That would be my recommendation, <laughs> but... Um, yeah, you can do it any way that you wish, of course. That's what I'll do, yeah. Duplicate the ad then and then split test it by duplicating it and then split testing it? You theoretically could do that as well, Richard. If you've got, like Leon's mentioning here, that's a good idea. If you've got a lot of uh, previous engagement, like shares, clicks, comments, things like that, well, that the, the, the internet currency, whatever you want to call it, won't really <clears throat> um, help you in terms of the algorithm right away people do see the likes and the shares and the clicks and the comment or not the clicks, but they'll see the likes and the, and the shares and things like that. And that might be enough to convince somebody, Hey, this thing's been liked by 40 other people. Maybe this is good. So what Leon's mentioning, and you can do this. If you go into your funnel section, go down to where it says reuse ad and you can launch from there. You'll have to find, uh, I usually do a little bit of sleuthing first. I figure out uh, which one it was. I look at it on Facebook. I figure out how many likes it had. And I also figure out which date it was launched on. Then when you go reuse ad and when it's asking you to search for an ad, put in 
um, whether it was a um, what's your home worth or if someone wanted to buy the you know, find the value of home to start typing the verbiage in and it should bring up a bunch of selectable options with that same title name and whichever one had the 70 likes or and was built on the same day that's that's your one okay awesome i'll try that hey i have a quick question how do we link the home bot with the street text is this something that i have to go in and do yeah so you go to the integrations tab and it should be a new button there that you click on and just automatically links okay so cool. yeah settings integrations click on home bot and then it should connect your street text okay thank you yeah Anybody needs some help converting leads or just want to ask questions about that? That's a, you know, this is a phenomenal opportunity to, to reach out to anybody here because there's been a lot of deals between all the masterminds. So this would be a perfect opportunity to ask questions, especially if you're new um, on what that time frame looks like. Hey, Marcus, uh, I'm new. This is my sixth, I think six, six months um, into a three tax. Um, little got a lot of leads. Most of them are tire kickers, and uh, I did the, the 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 twelve mistakes, and you know try to follow up with them. They just said stop. So I haven't you know got any listing yet. So I'm a little bit frustrated, but I know if I you know keep sewing, I'll rip something. My first uh, question for you, Cliff, what's your first point of contact? Like what's your, what's your reach out, your manual reach out to the individuals or are they simply saying stop the, the automation so far? Like, like for the 12 steps, uh, 12 mistakes, I, when I received the lead, I sent them an email. Okay. You know, with, with, uh, with the PDF in there. Then uh, I text them saying, hey, did you receive my, my 12 step? And then that's when they say stop. Okay, now you're you're relying on the email that's sent as an automation. You're not sending an additional email. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, good. Because yeah, that's kind of what I've seen um, a couple times. People were maybe a little unaware that the email is being automated, and they're sending another email, and that's what's causing a little bit of the oh, okay. writing multiple. Also, the reach out of hey, do you want to sell your home really quick? Obviously, so it sounds yeah, like you're no. not doing that, which is good. Um, and it's, it's one of those things that, again, you know, you're at that point in time, I'd say six months, this is very typically where, um, and I, I'm sure most people would, uh, who have been with us a long time can attest to that is, you know, the three month mark is really setting things up and getting things going around that six month mark, I would highly expect you to, you know, have more than just some stuff in the pipeline. So um, we'll have to work a little bit more with you, obviously, on, on, on everything else, but you're in the right place to start with. So, you know, I won't take the floor. Anybody else who has any, you know, recommendations for Cliff as to um, what's the next best, you know, activity or, or something to kind of get over I'll that line, Leon? I see yeah, I'll jump in here just real quick before, because I know, like, I, there's some really incredible strategies that we can talk about, Leon, and, and everyone here you can share that. But I just want to start by framing um expectations around the the lead so remember if a person owns a, if, if someone owns a home um a hundred percent of everybody that owns a home will sell that property in the future a hundred percent so sometimes we think people are tire kickers but if they're a homeowner they are going to sell and statistically that's between five to seven years and then in a season like this, people are really just getting ready. They just, they, they, they're, they have a lot of questions. And so number one is you got to start with the amount of opportunity that's in front of you. So six months of generating leads means that you've done a really good job of building a database of people that are homeowners, that are people that will sell their home. And now they have some questions. So that's, that's really like, you got to start there. And then number two is like, you got to think about it as, as, um, think of it visually as a graph. So every month you get somebody when you're, when you're advertising on Facebook, you're going to get a spread. There are going to be people who are ready to buy and sell right now they, they, that you're going to get them. They're, they're in Facebook. Um, if they're planning on buying and selling right now on Facebook and they see your ad, it's relevant. They're going to click it. They will come. 
you're also going to get people who are ready to buy or sell in two months. There's going to be some people who are ready to buy and sell in the future, but they're waiting for the promotion. They're waiting for the job change. They're waiting for maybe they're, they're going to be relocating and they're not hundred percent sure when that's capped. So it's like, you're also going to get those people and they're sort of in that 12 to 24 month bracket. So you're getting everybody that's the spread. But if you think about it, every month that you're building your database, the number of people that are ready to sell or buy today is increasing because you've not only generating the people this month, but you've also got the other people that were getting ready from the months before that are now ready this month. So every month that built, it grows. And then you get that exponential effect, which is exactly what happened to Jean Bartz, which is why in her first year of using Street Tax, she had one listing, which is great, covered the cost. But then now she's in her second year and she's currently working with eight, eight people, clients from Street Text for, uh, I think it, maybe it's 10. Is it, it's four buyers and six sellers or is it the other way around? Anyways, she's working with them right now. That's incredible. So, uh, but that's because of the exponential side of it. But what's really key is how we approach, which is ties into what Ira said, which is, are you answering the question that they had which is the reason that they submitted the inquiry, which is creating rapport, we're creating trust. And then it's basically starting that relationship and then staying in touch for the long run. So staying in touch is like extending out the drips, making sure that you're sending monthly reports, market reports to your database, your growing database of contacts, and then sending mailers that complement what you're sending on the uh, email side. That's how you build people who are now following you and then you send out questions. You send out questions every month or every every couple months. Hey, just checking in. Would you like another home value? The market's changed. Hey, just checking in. Uh, did you ever have that question answered? That you you know what I mean? Like, you just keep checking in. And when they are ready, they will respond. And then that's your appointment. That's your your listing. That's your conversation. So if we try to go for the listing and the appointment on the front, there will always be the 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 one out of uh, you know so many who are ready to buy and sell right now. And if you have an ISA approach, that's great. You'll get those. But at the expense of the other, the really big fruit, the, like the rest of the tree, because now they're burning off, they're unsubscribing, they're leaving, they're trying to get away. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure you're, you're, you're building your, your volume of follow, followers over time. So, so number one is just mindset, just knowing that there's incredible value. And number two, um, this, and then I'll share a real quick, simple story. It's just a funny story, but it's... Um, it just kind of pertinent to this. So I have a buddy who was sharing this last night. Uh, he has he has a pair of sunglasses, and uh, he loses his sunglasses. He's checking everywhere in the house. He's looking. Um, uh, you, you know, he's a doctor, so he can afford to buy new sunglasses. But he's just he wants to find these sunglasses, and so he's looking everywhere. He looks every single thing. Finally, he finds them. And they're in the truck. They're in his. Um, but they're in the shadow, so he can't really see them. And so he's like, "Wow, so glad!" And his wife's about to buy him another pair of sunglasses. And then he goes out longboarding uh, or paddleboarding, paddleboarding, and he falls in and he's a little embarrassed about falling in paddleboarding. And, uh, he, you know, he kind of like checks himself and he paddles away about 40 meters. And then, then he realizes, oh no, I lost my sunglasses again, same pair. He just found them. And so he really like, he's like determined. He wants to find these sunglasses. So he's like paddleboarding back and forth, trying to find his, like where he dropped them. He doesn't find them. They come back to the beach the next day, can't find it. Keeps coming back. His wife's telling, like she's standing beside us telling me the story. And he's like, she's like, yeah, it's like making things not fun because every morning they're going to go on an adventure. And it's, he's like, no, we got to go to this beach. We got to go paddleboard first. And they can't find these sunglasses. And so day five, uh, they try going early in the morning, but it's but the sun's on the wrong angle, so they can't see. And then the water's choppy, and so they're just not finding it. So finally, he says to his wife, "I'm going to go. I'm going to go check it out at 2 p.m." And she's like, "Why? Like, why even bother? They're not there. Like, they're gone now." And uh, he's like, "No, I'm gonna I'm gonna find these." So he gets on this paddleboard, and he's and he's and he's paddling across, and he looks down, and he sees in the water his his sunglasses, and he can't believe it. And so he dives in to go get them, and he misses them. And so he's telling me, he's like, he's like, it feels like he's competing for something because he's like, legs are shaking. He's like, oh, I missed my opportunity. Now I've floated away. So now he's getting back on his board and he's trying to get it. So he dives in again and he gets them and he's just like, get that, that sense of victory. And, uh, and so it's like, sometimes we're looking for something or we're pursuing something and we're, and it's like, it's there. It, it is actually there. And, and it was there the whole time. His sunglasses were there the whole time. So like this, those home, home sellers are there. 
they're waiting for somebody to reach out to send them that email so after this if you have people from six like if you've been generating these for six months send an email blast to everybody send it to your entire list and and just like a real quick question like are you still interested in the home value and just see what happens because every like there are home sellers right now who are there who are waiting for your email like they're they're there like they're still there and uh so i just want to encourage you all because it's a simple story but it tells a really truthful thing and sometimes we end up leaving thinking oh i guess they're not there but they were there the whole time so now leon your incredible techniques so funny the funny thing we always say that uh, it, it's one of those there's more than one right way but you know you go back to the definition of insanity it's continue doing things the same way and expect the same results when i come here and sit down like i said i always laugh because I, i'm old head i'll get it out the way yes i am but I'm not a closed mind or a closed mouth. So I love listening to people that are not just, might, might not just be new to real estate, but new to the group because you bring a different idea and mindset in. So one of the, one of the things that, you know, like one of my best ones that's gotten response has been like, Hey, Ira, how you doing? It's Leon from the premier houses team. I had a reminder pop up on my calendar to reach out to you about your home they've talked to 50 different agents. They don't know who you are unless you've got billboards all around town. So sometimes back up a couple steps. If your approach isn't working, don't be proud, change it. And when I do that reminder, they go, who is it? I love that. Who is this again? Hey, I got you. You're talking to me. So I say, oh, it's Leon. A couple months ago, you're on, you know, you're online on one of my websites. Da, da, da. I don't even name the website. I just want to get the conversation going. And at that point, I've already got their information pulled up in front of me. So I'm speaking what I know. I might never step foot in that neighborhood, but they don't know that because I've got the information in front of me and I'm talking about everything, confirming things. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, let me go ahead. And, and they love telling you about their home. So the Jennifer changed my thing a couple months ago because I used to be updates, upgrades, remodels. I go, well, what improvements have you done to the home? Because an improvement is not time specific either. And this guy wrote me a list. I was like, holy crap but it would give me something to work with. So I said, well, you know, based on all that, without a walkthrough, um, this is roughly where we're at for a range because I still don't know down a specific price. And I said, if you'd like, we can just do a Zoom meeting or this or that. And Washington State opens up 100% today. So all the rollback is off, COVID party is on, I guess, but um, just change up what you're saying to people. That you get it less is better. I cut all my automation in half this year and I've been twice as busy. So that tells me something's working. And it's not a matter of proud. If it don't work, back up, re-engage, do it a different way. Yeah, I love to hear about the wins, you know, that people have because I, you know, that's a good way for me to learn to see what they are doing, totally different from from what I'm doing. And at the same time, I'm thinking, what am I doing wrong? You know, so that's like a catch twenty two. It's also really good to start by asking yourself, what are you doing right? Because if <laughs> If you, if you go, uh, let's say you play baseball and you leave thinking, what am I doing wrong? You know, you, you, you're, you're going you're gonna to have a lot of things to work on, but you're not really confident on what is, you know, what doesn't need to be worked on. And I heard it really well from this guy. So he was, so I have a friend, Dan, and he was hiking up this mountain in, in our town and he was talking to this person and she's had a lot of success in her life, but she keeps like hitting this barrier where she repeats that success where it's like, going on. And so um, he asked her a question, said, what do you say to yourself in the morning? And she said, every morning I wake up and I tell myself, I don't want to be the reason my business fails. And he's like, looked at her. He said, okay, that's kind of like interesting. What would be the positive of that? And she says, okay, I want to be the reason that my business wins and succeeds. And he said, yeah. And then instantly she could see her posture and everything else change. Like her confidence was suddenly like elevated her sense of, because what happens is it's like when you're mountain biking, you don't look at the rock you want to miss because you actually go right towards it. You look at the path that you want to go down because that's where you move. So, uh, so the thing I think is start is like, ask yourself, what are you doing? Right. Well, number one, you're lead generating. Number two, you're building a database. Number three, you're following up. Those are all things that are check, 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 keep doing them. So now the question is like, okay, what are the strategies beyond that that I could look at adding to what I'm doing? So I'm, I'm actually like, you're actually on a path of success, a path of wins. Mm -hmm. And now you're, 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 you're just basically saying, 
okay, what's the toolkit that I'm available to add to this? If I'm going to go play baseball, I know I got power. I know I can swing. Someone might just say, hey, try lifting your elbow just a little bit, just, just a little bit, not even a lot. And then to see how that feels and if it feels right. All of a sudden you're like, yeah, that actually fixed it. Like, boom, you're, you're nailing that. And so it's, it's, yeah. Cause you're already doing everything right. Your stance is right. You've got the right approach. You're looking in the right direction. It's all, everything's right. Playing Scott, that's all you were going to speak to. I'm oh, sorry, Nicole. Playing off of what you've just said. I, uh, I beat myself up all weekend cause I lost a lead. I shouldn't say I lost, but it was, I mean, it was, I'd gone to her house. We'd been in conversation. We've had emails and phone calls and everything. And on one of my automations that went out, she responds and goes, nope, I've already found a great realtor. And I responded going, I'm really actually taken aback by this because by every indication, well, you know, da, da, da. And this guy, he's going to provide photos. I'm like, I do that. She goes, and he's cutting his commission, which means more money in my pocket. And I just responded with, well, you know, I wish you would have come to me with these concerns because blah, blah, blah. But I said, but, you know, cutting a commission doesn't always mean more money net to you, just so that you're aware. Um, you know, I wish you the best of luck. Let me know if I can help. And I beat myself up all weekend going, how did I lose this? And then through uh, one of the books that I'm reading, it was saying, don't focus on that part, you know, actually turn around and be like, you know what, I'm actually grateful that I've got people I'm talking to that, that I'm able to have that happen because a lot of other people don't. <laughs> so I'm, I've changed my frame of mind on that thinking, but yeah, it is frustrating when it happens. <laughs> Nicole, this is Adrian. Uh, my mindset is for every client I lose, I gain three. Yeah. And I've that. always focused on that. And you usually, that's what you get. It's, you got to think positive. No, no. And I do, but, and that's, that's what I was saying is it was just, I was framing that in the wrong way. And I've changed that now to, you know, I'm, I'm actually lucky because I've got people that I'm in contact with. And if one goes, that's fine. She probably was That's not awesome. the right client for you to begin yeah. with. Totally, totally. And I agree with you, Nicole. If a person's willing to negotiate on their commission, what are they willing to negotiate on your listing? Mm -hmm. So uh, don't you want somebody who's going to get you the most? I know. Who's got your best interest at heart and has yeah. the confidence to stand for what they feel it's worth? Yeah, if you can't negotiate your own commission, how are you going to no negotiate the money for that person? Yeah. Yes, so it's, a, it's a good point. Um, but awesome on that mindset. Uh, journey. That's incredible. Yeah. I guess I could share uh, some sort of win, not getting a listing win, but uh, I call this 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 person totally cold call. And the amount of profanity that came out from his mouth was incredible. It's like, holy cow, what did I get myself into? Uh, it seems I got my face kicked in. At first, I would say five minutes. Just you know what stuff coming out. I was like, oh my God, like, who the f are you? <laughs> and uh, I, I was calm and listened to him, agreeing with him. And, uh, and after we talked for half an hour. So after the, the last 10 minutes, he was started laughing, you know, and then uh, a week later we met and he's the nice, nicest guy. So I asked him, hey, um, when I called you, were you upset? He goes, no, man, you were like a 45th person that called me that week. It wasn't expired. And he, he was incredibly pissed off. And uh, I've never been uh, called so many names in, in two minutes. <laughs> so that was, uh, so I met him. He was a nice guy. It, you know, he didn't go anywhere. Um, but I guess I just, you know, stood my ground, listened and uh, agree with him. I understand his frustrations, but at the same time, you know, I, I keep shooting for that appointment and I got the appointment. He's the nicest guy. He's a farmer. So he's best no filter, just a straight shooter. But I stood my ground, listened, uh, empathized and I made a friend, maybe down the road, you know, he'll, 
he'll remember me. You know, who knows? <laughs> those are those are tough calls. I've had those before where you speak to somebody and it's just like no filter and you just you're just like, okay, right now they just need they just need to just let it go. Yeah. And you let it well, here's you a let, huge... let them go. And usually they feel really bad afterwards. But <laughs> the thing is, you gotta remember two things and then this is good is like it's talk to marcus about this he's got thicker skin in the world like he's got a you've got a good mindset marcus for how you how you were able to deflect this but number one is is like it's not personal he wasn't saying it at you number two move on quickly like it's okay to say to people like listen i don't like you know and this kind of counters what i just said but like it's okay to actually be like you know what sorry i didn't mean to trigger you um goodbye like it's okay just to call it like just to end it because do you really want that person as your friend if that's how they deal with with disappointment and frustration probably not the answer is no if that's how they're venting and communicating to you you don't want that person as a friend and so uh not every client is worth it and so sometimes it's like you can have a like a, a list of five star criteria and say like are is this person the five star criteria and if the answer is no you can actually say no i'm going to pass um and so and but then there are moments where you just need to let somebody vent and that's fine and that happens but just like you need to decompress yourself after sometimes right because it it can yeah it can get a little heavy uh but so, marcus you share on on your well no i wasn't going to say what well, what i have found you have to be clear in this communication cycle and bomb bomb the webinar we did with Alicia was phenomenal on addressing this. If you lead with empathy and empathy could be in so many ways, but the empathy I always consider is if whatever ad you're running in is like, I can only imagine you thought this click was just gonna be an automatic home value. That's empathy, right? Cause that person is like, why are you talking to me? Why did you contact me? There are all of these objections coming up and defense mechanisms. So empathy value is the second part of this. What I'm going to do for you is, right? And the value is that's, that's you're telling him how you're going to provide that value and that service in a way that's unique and different than anything they could find online themselves. And then there's the ask. So if you look at using all your communication in those one, two, three steps, empathy, value, ask, then it's going to go a lot more clear. And then of course, you're not going to have people that, that always respond to that, but Every communication is an empathy, value, ask model. And if you focus on those three things and everything you send and communicate, you're always going to get, you're always going to find the right people, I think. I mean, you're going to build your tribe. You're going to get people that, like Nicole had, you're not, you're, that's just not a person you want to have as a client, right? Because you're building your tribe. And that's why I always emphasize you're getting to get them to know and like you because they want, you need that type of people in your life anyways. Forget the other people because they're always going to be looking for a way out right? Or the cheapest commission or da, 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 da. You're looking for people that actually respect you and your work ethic and the value you offer and forget the other people. Yeah. So, yeah, so, just, yeah. And, and just, momentum, one, sorry. Oh, sorry. I guess one of the things that you, um, you, you can think about it, uh, is that uh, there's so many different personalities out there and not every client is going to match up to the type of client that you would, um, you would like to or can deal with, right? Um, so as long as you understand that, then you kind of can appreciate yourself because if that person is behaving in a manner that is disrespectful, chances are if you do list them, um, they're going to make your life a living hell. And we've all had those clients, right? So um, you have to, part of your qualification is finding the clients that will suit you in your business. Absolutely. And, and that's really good advice. And so the other thing is, is like, uh, energy builds when momentum builds and momentum builds when you have wins. And so look for the little wins, because when you have something that's heavy and, and negative, like you just described, well, guess what? That feels like a loss and the brain wants to spend a lot of time and energy on it. Let it go. Move on. Don't even talk about it. Like it never happened. Just move on. Like think, start thinking about the wins. Like think about all the wins because that creates the energy and the energy creates the activity because you wake up inspired, you go out there, you hustle, you do it and then check off the win. Be like, you know, if you, if you're competing again, back to cycling, like if you, if you go for, for like a long ride with a bunch of buddies, um, are you going to like look for the moments where you excelled? Look for the moments where you just like, oh, boom, I hit that. It was a really hard hill climb and I just like crushed it. 
or boom, hit the flat. And I just felt like the, like that speed, look for those moments and that, and then tell yourself that's the narrative that was your, your ride. It's because your brain actually wants to do the things that it gets a reward. And when we tell ourselves about the positive elements of it, our brain says, I want more of that. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to do more. And so when you are building your business and you're building a database of, um, of, of prospects, you're, you're, you're looking for relationships at the end of the day, but relationships, five star, but relationships are, will come from the activity that drive them. So, uh, sending emails, mass emails, try to, try to like, if you've got a, if you've been generating a prospect, like a database for a while, like you've got, um, volume is on your side. So, so send those, those emails, send those postcards and then look for the little wins along the way that will give you the sense that, Hey, this is re like worth reinvesting my time and energy into it and that will create more energy which will then make it easier to reinvest more and that's why you see that snowball effect and all of a sudden you see um you know people have one win and then boom now that two three four five so it just yeah. kind of snowballs start at the very bottom jennifer is great for that start at the very bottom the first lead you ever contacted with a phone number and a quick text checking in if they'd like an updated home value um, yeah. And you can do that with Julie because they're all, at least your automations are all from the, from the bottom. So you can just do a copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, and just go all the way back up the list with the, with the generic message. That's another easy way. I always say when the resistance is heaviest to you not wanting to do anything in action towards pursuing your goal, it's the greatest opportunity to gain muscle or strength in it. So whenever you feel defeated after a call like that, the sooner you could just do the thing you don't want to do, the more opportunity you're going to have and the more powerful you're going to feel in it because an experience like that makes you feel powerless. And I talked about this on the Lab Code Agents webinar we did last week is most of our problems are is that we don't have our foot down consistently on the gas, that we have these opportunities where like we, we get into a negative kind of thing. We lose this conversation. We don't follow through. So we take our foot off the gas and we start second guessing everything we're doing. And then we put our foot on back on the gas when we finally get our momentum again. And all that happens is you just end up with a bunch of whiplash. You're like whiplash. I'm like, I'm not feeling this. And what, so what you need to do is as soon as you took your foot off the gas, cause you had a negative experience, you just need to get your foot on the gas as quick as possible again. So it's like, now I have the opportunity. Like, I don't feel like doing it today today's the most important day to do it <laughs> the day that you feel like i don't want to do this i'm just going to take a time out i'm just going to go to the bar a little early <laughs> going to meet some friends that before you do that do some things that you don't want to do and then you'll get your momentum back quicker because it really is momentum and this like opportunities like this hearing stories like this help you kind of bring back and just so i would urge everyone just Go back and do what Marcus said. Look at all your numbers. Do some stuff yeah. today that you didn't play like doing. And Cliff, commit to going to these masterminds. Like, keep coming. Keep coming. Like, because in next week, you're going to have a different story. And the week after, you're going to have a different story. And the week after, you're going to have a different story. And you're going to hear something that surprises you that does that you're not expecting. And you're going to be like, that is exactly me. That's going to work for me. So, so just commit to that and you will see the fruit of it. And I, I think you're already going to see the fruit of your efforts. Just like the sunglasses, they're there. So you're, you're, you've already got them. So you, now you've, you've just got to reel them in. There's already people following you, listening to what you're saying, sending, just, just go out there, send a quick question. So, quick question. Hey, I have a question. Um, if you've got somebody, this is kind of off track, but with a lead that I've had that came in, that was somebody that already submitted in October. So now there's two automations that are turned on. Which one is the newest one and which one's the older one? How do I know? Don, I'm going to default to you. <laughs> <I'll do it. laughs> um, oh, my screen just turned off. That's weird. One sec. That's really weird. He's avoiding the question, John. Yeah, we're trying to get out of it, John. <laughs> I'm sitting across the office for him and I just saw him smack his camera. <laughs> yeah, I was, oh, I'll go without a camera, no problem. So um, if you look at your automations, uh, it should be, if, if you click on them, you should see the one that's the newest should be at the very top. Uh, and side. So would it be the one to the left? Yes. Okay. And if you have any questions, I can I can have a look at as well and just confirm with you. Yeah, I don't want to. Try the, to one of one of the things I always say: pull back a little bit because sometimes we get tunnel visioned into what we're doing, 
and you need to just pull back and actually look at what you're doing. And if you're not sure that you, you have so many people in this group that are willing to work with you, ask somebody. And, and when, once you do that, as far as thick skin, you're in the wrong job if you don't have thick skin to take criticism. And I'm laughing with Cliff because you were agent number 80, dude. That's what you were. I had a guy that, that un unloaded on me last week and I started <laughs> laughing and the guy got quiet and I said, well, because he goes, well, I'm sorry if I'm and he's apologizing while he's like unloading on me. So I just started laughing. I said, man, I was in the military. You got a long way to go. Keep on going. What else you got on your mind? And the dude got up quiet and then he started laughing. He apologized. And now we're going back and forth to get an appointment. But, but like I said, you got to know when to ask for the deal. You don't go for the, you know, they say go for the jugular. You don't go for it right away. Pull back. Everybody's different. We're part there. You know, you are jack of all trades and master of none when you do real estate. So you're part therapist, you're part, you know, marriage counselor, this, that, everything. So you just have to know when, but, but to pull back an easier victory is one that you're already halfway there to accomplishing. So go find all your active folks that have been in there. And like I said, just change your approach, change your line. If the one you had hasn't got it, go somewhere different, a yes, no question. And like I said, my best one has been, Hey, I had a reminder pop up. I'm already explaining why I'm calling you. I had a reminder pop up to give you a call. You're on my site a few months back, da, da, da get in there, go for the ones that are active, get the easy victories, get it rolling. And, and that'll let you steamroll into the other ones. But you just, you know, if you don't like the results you get the way you're doing, change it up. It, all, all, all that takes is you doing that. You don't need anybody else to change up what you're doing. Yeah. And, and if you can, if you can think about it like that, um, um, the less time you spend on the ones that probably will never convert, like, I mean, maybe they're not there or for whatever reason, you know, so the less time you spend on them is the more time you can spend on people who actually have the possibility of converting, right? And that's why you have to keep generating more leads and even go back to your past clients and, um, you know, try to work with them who are respectful and, you know, the type of client that you would want to have. Your goal in your older clients is nobody gets out of bed going, I'm selling my house today. I'm going to call Scott. It's going to be that guy that thought about it six months ago that has finally gotten around to getting the things done they need to do to finally get in a position to do this. I went to a listing appointment yesterday from someone I met last November. So just following yeah. up, sending the things. And, that, and here's another thing, Leon. I, I, there was a property across the street that just sold. And we were so curious because we know we got in the market last June here. And we bought and we got a really good deal on it. And so that house across the street is not too much different than ours. And I want to know what it sold for, how much equity like we've gained in our home, especially in this market. And we were just blown away. So you're going to get a lot of people that are just blown away when they find out how much equity they've gained in their home. And all of a sudden that quick text or reminder, that email is all they needed, right? Because there's, they, people are not naive. They know their homes are selling all over the place right now. And if their neighbors are selling or someone across the street selling, we're all driving down that same street. So when it, when it prompts them in that moment, they're finally like, should we cash out? Is this the time? Um, and that's where I think it's right now, it's a phenomenal time to check back in with your older leads because that could be just the conversation to start. The timing of the event is important too. Schools closed, finished in Washington last week and this week. So now people are starting to get on the move. People that, you know, they're, they're not going to get up and displace their kids out of school. And the other thing is, why would I sell my house when it would cost me five, six, seven hundred dollars more a month to rent somewhere if I could rent somewhere. So the timing of the event and the cycles are important. So if you're trying to make a push, now's the time. And even if you let out, hey, school's out, this and that, I had a reminder to pop up with you. Um, just looking to see what your plans are. I ain't even asking you yet for the deal. When you tell me what's going on, I'm gonna tailor my pitch to what you need because it's all about your needs. Old. All right, last last minute questions, comments, anything that you need from us. This is kind of getting towards the end of the mastermind. It's been gold as always. I mean, I I, I would tell you, just Cliff, just come here every week. Come here every week. Yeah. That's your non-negotiable. Everybody that I've seen that are that is here every week are the same people that are winning. I mean, and I, I can't that's the one thing I know for a fact in the six years I've done this. People that come to the mastermind for some reason are the same ones winning. And I'm seeing consistently the people that drop out of the mastermind are usually the ones that end up falling out. Just read that. It's just, 
It's just consistency. And I'm going to say this and complain the most. When I hear people sit here, I'm just going to say it. There ain't no reason to lie. When I hear people complain about nothing working and then when you ask what they did and they're crickets or they did none of it, it's like, how can you complain about something not working if you weren't doing it in the first place? And, and, and the, best re- the, the best lesson out of that, you know, they say seven to 12 engagements gets you a deal. They tell you that for a reason. And, and it's statistically proven. People drop after the first three or four or they're so sporadic, they're gone. So when you turn around and you're still sending things, and I tell people, just because you sent me 10 emails, texts, and all that the first week, that's not how this works. When you spread it out over a period of time, they say, stay top of mind, front of mind. If you expect me to remember the 10 emails you sent me four or five months ago, who is this again? Click. So, you know, change up what you're doing. And I'm not pointing no fingers. I ain't picking on nobody because I've dropped the ball myself and I'm sure I'll do it again. But sit on a minute. You know, they call it a business plan and a game plan for a reason. Go retweak your business plan, sit down, remember there's a business and go make it happen. I am busier through the whole COVID because I went back and regrouped everything. And then when I cut back to automation, it, it's really ramped me up. I'm almost feeling like I got a job because I'm doing something every day, but I'm saying that in a good way. So, you know, hey, if y'all got any questions, reach out to me. I'm here. I don't mind. You guys keep me sharp because you keep me focused. So I thank you for that. If you need me, I'm here. That's awesome. I, I find that, um, I mean, I've only, um, I've ju- only just joined uh, Street Tech since I think uh, April, but I find that uh, these groups, like uh, everybody's so positive and uh, just very motivating. And it's actually, you know, the little tidbits that I take every week um, and I just try them out or, you know, I'll send a message to somebody from Street Text and they'll friend me and then I'll ask them things. Um, I just find that, uh, you know, it, it's amazing and it, it really does energize you. It's sort of re-energized. Um, my business, to be honest. So, um, you know, I thank you guys because I, I, I love, I love, I love the guys, and I, I love everybody in the group. I got a, I got a cool story to share. So, um, cyclist, I don't know if you noticed this. Um, so, the Tour de France has started, and there's this guy called Cavendish who, uh, world like world class cyclist, amazing. Uh, he's a sprinter, but he sort of hit his prime a few years ago. And, you know, he's won the world championship. He's done really well. He's won a lot of, like, a lot of races. He's, uh, and he, about, I think it was 2017, uh, roughly, uh, 2018, 2017, he had a really bad crash in the Tour de France. And that kind of, like, ended his uh, Tour de France. And then uh, the following spring, he comes out for a big race. It's, like, a big early spring classic and has another really bad crash and smashes in the sign. And like, it was the worst one I've ever seen. Like he literally flipped over and was, I thought he broke his back, but he was okay. But it, it ended his career. Like it was done. And for the, like, he went from being like top of like sprinter in like uh, the world to struggling to get on a team and just fighting to get on a team. And he just, I watched some of the interviews and he's like, I just love cycling. And so he just kept like fighting to get on team. And I was like, I was like, his chances of winning like another, like that level kind of race, not going to be there, but he just kept fighting, kept going, kept going. Well, 2021 Tour de France, he got on a team that was willing to bring him to the Tour de France. He goes on the Tour de France two days ago or three days ago, stage three of the Tour de France. Not only is he in the lead group for the finish line, he, he, he tacks, he finds the thing, no guy passes him. He finds it again and he wins stage three of the tour de France. All of a sudden it's, people are like blown away. He's, he's passed his prime and he's just won a sprint race against the world's best sprinters in the tour de France. And he's going to break the world record for the number of stages ever won in tour de France, like boom, mind blowing. So if you feel like you ever hit that point where you're like, ah, you know what? Is it worth, it's worth it. And you can do it and come back and win it because you're not past that point. Like if a guy like Cavendish can come back, like literally that's like three or four years later and he already had his prime. Like it's, it's unbelievable. And, and, and that's like in cycling, like if you're a sprinter, it's, it's a short flight, like a short fire, like amazing, amazing. It's like, I, I'm blown away. So I just feel like go out there, crush it. You're more than capable. You guys are awesome. Everybody, like, thank you for coming today. I loved hearing the stories. I love <laughs> connecting. And uh, yeah, just go, just go crush it. Go crush it. This is this is your time. Yeah, I really appreciate everybody here. Thank you so much. Yeah. Leave it with that. That was amazing. I'm not gonna say another thing.
Thanks for coming, everybody. We'll end the mastermind right there. We'll see you next week. Bye, y'all. Thank you. See you next week, guys. Have a great day, all. See you next week.